the initiative, and we are having discussions and research on what we call now grand corruption and uh, <coughs> no impunity. Last year, Transparency International celebrated 20 years of existence, and uh, we had a <coughs> special meeting in Berlin, and we were discussing among the colleagues in the movement if there were reasons to celebrate. And on one hand, we found that, yes, in 20 years, TI has achieved many goals. We had the ability to put the issue of corruption in the top of the world agenda. Now we have a convention of United Nations against corruption, and TI played a key role there. We've been working with uh, international institutions like the G20, the G8, the G7, OECD, uh, World Bank, and other institutions uh, advocating on action we are seeing now is quite different than the one we saw when we started our work. If you uh, look at the definition of corruption that TI has promoted and has been taken as a definition, a global definition all around the world, probably it will not apply to the type of corruption we are seeing right now. Because we said that corruption is the abuse of entrusted power for personal gain. But this formula, it's a short one, does not comprehend all the features of the type of corruption we are seeing nowadays. When we uh, put in place this definition, we were looking mostly at corrupt individuals. We were not talking about systemic corruption, but probably widespread administrative corruption in many countries of the third world and some countries of the first world. And relating uh, to corruption in power, we were talking about dictators or authoritarian regimes that were taking money grossly from their public budgets. And we have the cases of Abacha in Nigeria, or Ferdinand Marcos in Philippines, or Suharto in Indonesia. And then we had these crooks in power with a lot of cronies around them taking money from their countries abroad. But we were not talking about structures of corruption that were put in place. Now, in this century, there has been a change of paradigm. Now we are in a global world. We have global communications. Something happens here in seconds. It is known all around the world. There are no boundaries. People can move easily from one place to another. Two days ago, I was speaking at a meeting in Lima, and now I'm here. Tomorrow, I'll be in Berlin, and on Monday, I will have another meeting in Lima. So it is very easy to move around the world. Technical means have developed <coughs> consistently and in a very fast track, and now we have technology that it's on the possibility of uh, many people. Even in poor countries like mine, if you go to the hills, you will find that people can go to a cabinet pay one soul or two souls that is less than 50 cents of a dollar, and they can connect to internet. So technical means are available, even in places where there are not wealthy people. Financial tools now make possible to move millions or billions of dollars without uh, moving physically from a place. You just have to go into a system, put, press some buttons and then you move the money from one place to another and of course there are a lot of financial vehicles that make possible moving huge amount of financial resources uh, in, in seconds and without identifying who are the people that are moving this money or who are at the end the beneficial owners of these operations and of course a huge difference now is being made by organized crime if we see how powerful these groups have become in the past decade, we will see that there are organized crime, illicit groups that are even challenging countries. If we look at what's happening in Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, just to name some countries of my region, we see that they are challenging the states and the states are not capable to control these groups because they are very powerful in economical resources, they have private armies, and they can move easily from one place to another. 
and specific region or dealing with some specific material. So huge changes have occurred regarding corruption and that's why now we are talking about what we believe should be named grand corruption. And uh, now there are groups, it's a trend right now, someone is proposing that we should try to establish an international court in order to uh, judge and try big cases of corruption. Others were thinking that it would be possible to take these grand corruption cases to the ICC, the International Criminal Court, and try to put them uh, in these uh, uh, crimes against humanity cases that are going before the court. Others are talking about global jurisdiction, and as it happened with the human rights cases that made possible, for example, that Pinochet, being a Chilean citizen, was captured in Spain and tried by a Spanish judge because he was under uh, global jurisdiction, we could do something similar in these cases of grand corruption. And the first stage to understand this new phenomenon is to try to arrive to a definition of what we are understanding when we are talking about grand corruption. And we don't have a complete definition or sound definition at this point. We are working on it. There's a group of lawyers that in pro bono basis are working with our people in Transparency International, first of all, to have a definition of what we are meaning when we talk about grand corruption. We have some features of what we understand about grand corruption. We are talking about bribery, stealing, and illicit enrichment. And uh, because of the impact of these actions, they necessarily deprive many people or a particular group of basic human rights. And in most of these cases, in all of these cases, there is a considerable amount of money involved. So we are talking now about systemic corruption. That corruption that is embedded in the structures of a state in some cases. And in other cases, we are talking about groups that are capturing, literally capturing the state. And there are many examples of that. Uh, according to some research, there are around 30 states called failed states around the world that are out of control and are in the hands of illicit groups. And in all of those, of course, grand corruption is a huge issue. Now, it could apparently test 